You know, so what are the best way to educate 18 to 22 year olds and, and the best way in which they learn? Uh, and for us, you know, I think the iPad really can in incorporate anything. It's not just it has the, the actual playbook. You can take notes in it, but you can add the video aspect in it. Uh, you can have voiceovers and all that stuff. So there's, you can really use about four different ways of learning and you can specify on how each kid learns to get them the help that they need. So it can't be a dog ate my playbook kind of thing now. <laughs> yeah, it'd be bad if they lose it, right? It's, more, it's much more expensive notebook that they're losing than dog ate their homework. But, you know, I don't, but I think the kids like it. You know yeah. what I mean? The kids, they, they, um, that, that's kind of how they, that, that's how they do things in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm still learning to kind of write on it with the, <laughs> the pen. It's, What's it called, a stylist? There you go, right? And every player I can use one? my finger. Oh, yeah, every they player. have that. Well, because they have a notebook for class. That's how they take okay. their notes in class. I have the, I have the little, I have the Brookstone board, keyboard, yeah. right, That I'm because I'm more of a typer. But I, I kind of get all my stuff done that way. But, um, you know, I, I think you've seen it. I think, I think it's helped not just in football. It's also helped in the classroom. When you look at the uh, tight end position, how with some of the players not being there yesterday, two days ago, how did they kind of step in and fill the roles of a Boy, that's Hillary always Johnson. tricky. Yeah, we have, you know, when you got guys with, you know, uh, yeah, Brandon had a funeral yesterday and, um, you know, Milton had a funeral yesterday. And so, but, you know, I mean, for us, this time of year, it's, it's all about opportunity. You know, it's the next guy in, the next guy up, especially this time of year. There's a lot of opportunities out there. You know, we stress for those guys. These are the opportunities because, you know, we're, we're going, you're getting a lot of reps with ones and twos and threes. You come game day, there's 70 reps to be had. You know, so the opportunities are going to start becoming less and less and less and less. Um, you know, so when, when guys aren't there, it just kind of opens the door for somebody else to step in and take that opportunity. Do you think that changes the approach of some of the veteran players, like wide receiving core, not a lot of experience coming back. Do you think that changes their approach of instead of being that guy, in creating that competition? Well, I think that position, I think it's a wide, such a wide open competition. Everybody knows. I mean, it's their, your opportunity to perform on a daily basis. I mean, there's not, uh, you know, there's not anything set in stone. I mean, I, there's, uh, you know, I don't, I can't, I, mean, I don't, there's nothing's been decided at that position. I promise you that on the depth chart or any of that stuff of who's going to play, who's not going to play, who's starting, what the rotation's going to be, any of that. It is just pure opportunity to see at the end of training camp who's made the most plays, who, who does things the right way and put it is in the best opportunity to get on the field and go. So you, you watch for the energy tomorrow morning when they get back out there? I think we'll be okay, though. I think, you know, I mean, they got to sleep in a little bit today. And by going inside, we went indoors today, um, you know, with that, that, you know, we expected the next uh, tomorrow to be a grind for them. And, uh, you know, one, to make sure that they're prepared to go and give what we were asking. Weird question, Dan, but the, when you look at the coaching tenures of assistants, especially in this league, um, <laughs> how have you and Les lasted this long? Because <laughs> you're the only one that's only had one offensive coordinator Am I? in the last four years. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy <laughs> right there. How have you and Les and John kind of lasted this long? Oh, I have to go make some changes, I guess. Seriously, though, I mean, seriously, though, it almost I'll seems. I'll stir it up right now. I mean, and say. It seems like. I, I read sometimes there's like teams that do that, right? Make changes this time of year. <laughs> uh, no, you know what? I, I think, you know, philosophically, it's that, it's that match, you know, and uh, uh, it's always important, especially, you know, I'm more of an offensive minded head coach and a quarterback oriented head coach. So you have to have somebody in that position. Uh, that you're going to meld well with, you know what I mean, that there can become a lot of tension or conflict or one of those things. And I think, you know, Les and I have a good relationship that, uh, you know, we're a good fit together uh, in um, those kind of how our personalities mend. We're not the same because that probably wouldn't work. And we're not completely different. That probably wouldn't work. I think just a nice combination together, and I think that certainly helps it. You know, I'm in the same with, with a lot of our other offensive coaches. Can you talk about the family aspect of, of the staff? I mean, you know, Billy talked yesterday about, you know, you had a meeting and said, hey, I don't know when your kids start school, but take your kid to school on the first day. That's important to me. Um, he'd never heard that before. <laughs> you know what? I think it is. You know, I think we get, we get lost sometimes in, in coaching, uh, in, in what's important. I, you know, I want our guys, uh, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, I look at them, I tell them, I say, you know, we, we might not be able to pay you what other schools in this league pay everybody. Uh, you know, and um, but as part of a quality of life here, I want our coaches to have good quality of life. I, I don't uh, want any coach to ever look back uh, on our staff, and I certainly don't want my kids to look back and say, you know, hey, 
uh, my dad was never around. I know they're going to probably say that already because of, of how much time we put in. You know, but there's certain things, you know. I mean, first day of school, having your dad be able to take you to school on the first day of school or, you know, have your dad take you out trick-or-treating or making sure that, you know, you're spending time with a family at Christmas or, you know, I mean, honestly, during the season, if there's a big Little League game or if there's a, um, you know, a big – I don't play Pop Warner here, whatever, like, you know, <laughs> but rec league games that, you know what, dad can show up and do that. So we might not be able to be the coach, right. you know, like, like other people do, but you know what, we're, we're still going to be around enough that you, you have that great quality of life. So I, I think that's certainly helped in keeping coaches here because they can look and say, hey, you know what, I, I, I have, I, I can be a football coach, but I also can be a husband and a father here as well and live that sort of lifestyle. Talk about Nico Whitley in the spring. Obviously, he looked like he was back to where he was a couple of years ago. Yeah, I think he's back healthy. I, I tell you what, I, you know, he's taken a lot of steps forward, not just as a football player. He's always been a pretty good football player. Just his demeanor, how he handles himself, his preparation, uh, you know, and even trying to, in, in, in his own way, be a, a leader. You know, I know he's, he's, he's not a raw rock guy, but in his own way, doing things the right way, believing and buying into the program. And uh, I think that that's huge for us and for him and his future.